There's another big reason that I speak uh, English, and that is Dutch people. No matter where you go in this great country of 17 million men, <laughs> uh, Dutch people speak English really well. Like, how many Dutch people speak English really well? <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Best bescheiden, and yeah. <laughs> One person who's kind of proud. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, but D Dutch people, you do. You speak. You should be proud. Uh, how about this? How many Dutch people speak English better than French people? <laughs> better than German people? Yeah. Better than some American people? Yeah. yeah, 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 and you should be proud, exactly. You do, <laughs> you speak, I mean, the average uh, Dutch person, you speak English better than some American people. I took a whole plane ride sitting next to a guy uh, who I thought was from a different country and actually was from Louisiana. Uh, <laughs> I did only realized later, you're actually from America. It's, uh, so yeah, well done. And uh, you know, <laughs> I, there's a big reason that Dutch people are uh, very well uh, spoken in English. And uh, it's you're, uh, international, you know, uh, you are well educated. I mean, sure, you always lose to Belgium on Team four thou, uh, yeah. <laughs> but generally, there's a big reason why Dutch people speak English really well, and that is <coughs> Undertitel. <laughs> right? I don't know why, but in the biggest countries in Europe, France, Germany, Spain, Italy, they, they don't, you know, they don't do subtitles. They only do like the na synchronizere. They do voiceovers, and I don't know, they want to keep their people in the dark, I don't know. But I mean, it's hilarious, of course, when you, like, when you sit at, at, and, uh, and watch television in, in Germany or something. You ever go to like Dusseldorf or something and you just turn on the TV, and then you get to see like Mr. T or something, you know, and Mr. T's like, Ich werde nicht in kein Flipsack. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> when did Mr. T make a Nazi movie? <laughs> As an American, that's what you think, you know? But here in the Netherlands, you can flip on whatever, air take, L something, and there's always some episode of A-Team playing, and the original Mr. T comes on with his voice, and he gets up in someone's face, and he says, I ain't going on no airplane, fool. <laughs> and then they subtitle it, and they always do such a good job. I ain't going on an airplane, fool, turns into, Ich ga liever niet in die vliegtuig, hoor. <laughs> It's never exactly right, is it? <laughs> this is when you start to learn, live here long enough, then you really start to get the subtleties of it. And I think those kind of uh, subtitles, that explains a lot for a lot of uh, uh, people, like my Dutch wife, who are pretty sure that uh, they are uh, speaking the fluid uh, English. But then it's difficult as well. Like when you go to a different country, an English-speaking country, the mayor of Amsterdam, for example, 400 year anniversary of the Manhattan colony. 2009, he came over, ladies and gentlemen, and now it is the mayor of Amsterdam for the 400 year anniversary. He came on stage and he got up there and he was like, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and instead of saying good evening, everyone, he said, ladies and gentlemen, good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs> and it was a huge laugh and he was like, oh, I'm, I must be really funny. <laughs> We are all thinking, damn, that was the shortest speech ever. <laughs> this guy really sticks to the script. Anyway, so, I mean, it's difficult, I know, when, you speak, when you're multilingual and when you're trying to bounce back and forth, like, how about this? How many people have traveled to the United States in the past uh, 10 years? Yeah. Hands up. <laughs> Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's fun, isn't it? When you go and you try to get to the airport and they have the two lines, you know, there's like U.S. passports, non-U.S. passports, and uh, do not get into the wrong line or you may be deported. <laughs> and then they say, hi, welcome to the United States. Put your finger on the scanner. Look into the camera. Do not blink. Do not smile. Have a nice day. <laughs> and that's what it's like lately living in America, traveling to America, but when you're Dutch, it can be really tricky, right? Because when you are already nervous about you know, the language, about your, your, your passport, immigration, whatever, some Dutch people, you have to put your passport on that table and you have to say, please let me into your country. My name is Freak. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Now, we all know that Frake is a perfectly respectable Dutch name. But try telling that to the guy at immigration at an American airport, and it gets worse. Your name is Freak? Yes. I am traveling with Jerk. <laughs> is this some kind of joke? Uh, nay, that is my wife, Yoka. <laughs> and this is our son, his name is Taco. <laughs> Try getting into the United States with names like Joke Taco. <laughs> Mr. Alvarez is not amused behind the desk. You know, are you here for business or pleasure? We're here, it's for one business. I am boss and this is job. Boss and job, we're here for work. We <laughs> Don't worry, we will behave. Boss and job follow rule. Jo <laughs> job and rule go well together. <laughs> job follows rule, rule follows job. <laughs> your, your name might be Floor. Try getting into the United States. Your name is Floor? Yes, I am Floor and this is Door. <laughs> floor and door go well together. Door and harm do not go well together. <laughs> Do not harm yourself on door. <laughs> and then sometimes there's harm and Hanukkah together. Why do you want to harm Hanukkah? <laughs> <laughs>